the Cisal TV TV from Lausanne, from Ecole Polytechnique de Lausanne. And we are together with uh, Dr. Bertrand Picard, who is founder of Solar Impulse, which is the first airplane of perpetual endurance, able to fly day and night with no fuel. Okay, Bertrand. So I would like to ask you for, to make a small exercise at the beginning. I would like to ask you for closing your eyes for 10 seconds. You make the hypnosis. Normally I do the hypnosis. <laughs> no, I would like to ask you for this. And I would like to ask you to imagine that you are in your plane and really tell us what do you feel when you are alone in the plane? What are your feelings? What is your motivation? What is the thing that you are thinking about? I'm feeling a plane that moves always a little bit like this because it's very big, it's very light, so it's a little bit unstable in the turbulence. So you always fly a little bit like this, like if you're on a boat. But this is just the way it's built and the, the, the experience of flying it is also fantastic because it's the only plane that gains energy when it flies. Normally on every plane you have the fuel gauge going down. Mm -hmm. And here you have the fuel gauge or the energy gauge going up. And the more you fly, the more energy you have. So it's a completely other paradigm. And normally when you fly in an airplane, okay, you take the plane to go from A to B. And here you don't care about the distance. You know you can fly forever. And you know that you have millions of people who are following you because they are supporting this message about clean technologies, about solar energy, about sustainability, about the way to, to go into the future in a different way. But what do you feel? I mean, like, what is your motivation? What do you feel? Do you think about all these people who are thinking about you or you are thinking about uh, arriving to the point and uh, about your tears that you will have in your eyes when you land in Abu Dhabi? What is your feeling? No, there are two parts in my life always. I want my life to be exciting and useful. So I love the part that is exciting mm -hmm. uh, because it brings very interesting experiences. I always go beyond what I believe I could do. I achieve things that nobody thought could be achieved. I push my limits to the impossible and hopefully succeed. But this has to be useful, otherwise it's selfish. So it has to be useful uh, in order to demonstrate that today the technologies, the clean technologies are mature enough to achieve impossible things and that all the technologies we have in solar impulse can be used everywhere. And uh, do you remember the, the day or the moment, uh, the second, when suddenly you said, wow, Bertrand, I would like to fly with uh, solar. Do you remember this moment? Yeah, the absolute first moment is when I saw the UAV from NASA, mm -hmm. Helios, flying with a remote control. And I thought, why do they have a remote control? They could have a pilot and I want to be the pilot. Mm -hmm. And then I forgot about it because I didn't have time. I was on my preparation to make the first round the world nonstop balloon flight. Mm -hmm. And during that flight, it was 20 days. Every day I was afraid to fall short of fuel because we had propane to heat the envelope and the fuel was decreasing every day. And I thought that's not a way to fly. And uh, I succeeded with Brian Jones, but there was no fuel left. And it was really tight. Huh? It was almost a failure. We just succeeded because we had two hours of margin with the propane after 20 days. And that's when I made the promise that I would fly around the world with no fuel exactly. and have an aircraft that would be able to make perpetual flight, stay in the air forever. So you had your dream and uh, of course to realize your dream you had to make contagious other people with this idea. So how did you succeed to make it? I understood one thing. It's absolutely useless to try to convince people that your idea is good. Mm -hmm. Because when you convince somebody you're always fighting against the part of the other one who'd like to resist, who'd like to say no I don't want to come, no the idea is crazy. So don't try to convince, try to motivate. Mm -hmm. Try to associate the other one to your dream. And I was never looking for somebody making my dream for me happen. I was looking for people who would be together with me, make it happen and make it their own success also. 
and that was the case with the uh, Swiss Federal Institute of Technology, who was the first institution who believed in my vision, mm -hmm. with Audrey Borchberg, who became my partner in this project, and with all the technology and financial partners uh, who are funding this project. Speaking now about your flight, so you had already the first part of the flight uh, from Abu Dhabi to Hawaii, and I would like to ask you which were the biggest um, issues and problem, problems during this flight? Everything. Everything. Everything because it has never been done. Mm -hmm. So you always have a big part that is unknown and unpredictable. Uh, we were delayed in total two and a half months by the, the bad weather mm -hmm. in Chongqing, in Nanjing, in Japan. So it took us much longer. Then we overheated the batteries, which was our mistake. It was not the technology of the batteries. It was our mistake to misuse them, climb too fast, insulate too much, and now we have to change them. Overflight permissions. Um, visa problems in the immigration in India. You know, you, so many things. So, so at the end, which are unpredictable, you know, I, I tell you, if in the future you have less adventure and exploration, it's not because people want be keen to try new things. It's because it will be so difficult with administration and bureaucracy and certification and legislation and things like that. It's, it's also difficult. <laughs> okay, so I will ask you one question which I asked Elon Musk. Actually, I asked him this question, I think it was like two days or three days after uh, his rocket uh, blew up. And you remember it was during his uh, birthday, actually. And uh, I was in Boston at a uh, NASA conference and um, a lot of questions were like really diplomatic, etc. But I asked him the question which, which I really had in my, in my heart. So Elon, can you tell me what keeps you fighting, especially in such difficult moments? And I would like to ask you the same question, Bertrand. What keeps me fighting is the profound conviction that if it was easy, somebody else would have done it already. And each time things are difficult, it just reminds me, it just reminds everybody in the team, because I tell them the sentence maybe every week, it reminds to all of us that we are pioneers. Mm -hmm. um, that all these difficulties are just challenges to overcome. And if we want an easy life, let's not go in the world of ex exploration and adventure. And this is exactly what I do also with my, my team. And uh, another question, let's say, for the second part of the, of the flight. And how do, you, how do you see it will go, uh, go on? And uh, when do you expect uh, to land in Abu Dhabi? I plan to land in Abu Dhabi at 10.30 in the evening. But the date is not uh, yet? No, no, the date is not fixed. The month is not fixed. Mm -hmm. I hope the year is fixed. Okay. <laughs> but it should have been this year in 2015. And now it, it's, it's postponed one year. Which is, which is <laughs> On one hand, it's great also for our movie, because thanks to that, we can have your story in our film. So, but which are uh, still the challenges to overcome, let's say, to, to start flying? And uh, what uh, do you expect, uh, based on the experience from the first pa part of the, of the flight, uh, which will help you to, to, to reach the final goal? We have made the first series of flights across Asia. Mm -hmm. uh, short of flight, but very challenging in terms of overflight permissions, weather, operations, logistics, and things like this. Then we had the flight of André from Nagoya to Hawaii, mm -hmm. which was the first time there was an airplane flying five days, five nights with no fuel. So I would say in terms of logistics, in terms of unpredictability of the technology in the airplane, we have a lot now behind us. Mm -hmm. But in front of us, we have very, very iconic flights, you know, reaching America from Hawaii then crossing the US, then crossing the Atlantic, and then of course going back to, to, to Abu Dhabi. So these flights will be used to really promote our spirit about clean technologies, about solar energy, about protection of the environment, about fighting climate change, showing that climate change is not a big expensive problem. It's a fantastic profitable opportunity mm -hmm. to bring new technologies on the market. It's like a new industry revolution. Exactly. And we want to carry that message when we will fly for the second part of the round the world. Okay, so I have something for you. And this is actually quite a historical moment. So this is invitation from the Global Solar Council. So actually, uh, 
I would like to give you some background about, about this event, which will be held uh, at uh, COP21, you know, the most important mm -hmm. event uh, this year for the climate change issues. And uh, I started to work uh, in solar industry in 2004. And since 2004, when you might remember, still the solar markets were very limited. There was only Germany, maybe Japan, US. We wanted, you know, in order to push solar, to unite uh, solar organizations around the globe. But until now, there are always negotiations, negotiations, and we never came up, you know, with the common action, with the common organization, in order to promote now the global industry. Yeah? Because as you know, of course, there is more than 60 or 70 markets now in solar industry. And we would like to also, our friends, they would like to invite you as a keynote speaker. And you are the first officially invited person uh, to this event. But I would like to ask you for something, because there are still some people in the industry who are hesitating about working together. You might imagine there is a lot of associations around the globe. What would be your message? Like, you know, Bertrand Picard, the person who is uh, facing a lot of, um, let's say, challenges also in his life, but he's fighting. What would be your message to all these guys, you know, in the solar industry, in different associations, that it should unite and that should work they should work together for the, for the common goal. First, I'd like to congratulate you for this initiative. It's very useful, it's very promising, and of course I will come it's to, your, course, to your invitation. It, it, these are colleagues from the solar yeah. global industry. Mm. I'm also invited and I also mm. use this opportunity to invite you. Now but the message is that industries should compete against each other in terms of price and in terms of technology. Mm -hmm. But they should work together in terms of promoting the spirit of what they want to do. So of course you need all the photovoltaic industry to work together to promote this industry, to show that it's mature, that it's profitable, and to implement it. Then the customers will decide which factory of solar cells they will choose for their uh, investment. Uh, but uh, if we don't demonstrate all together the profitability and the reliability of this industry and with these technologies voice. with one voice with one voice then we'll never be able to convince and motivate maybe more motivate uh, the potential customers um, i remember our talk uh, a month ago by by skype i think uh, when we were discussing about uh, all the awareness campaign that you were mentioning just a few seconds ago which is related also to to, to the flight but you told me also, which is very interesting and which I took into consideration, forget about the awareness campaign. Now there is a call for action. We need to call for action. So what so do you mean by this? I mean that it's useless to tell to the people the earth is a magical place, life is a miracle, nature is fragile, we have to protect it, we have to be all good friends, all love each other and have a perfect life. This is absolutely useless. It doesn't work. Uh, people have tried that since hundreds of years, it doesn't work. What you need is to give an advantage mm -hmm. to people. Can be financially, can be the visibility, can be their fame, can be uh, political po uh, positions or elections or whatever. Give them an advantage to change in a positive way. Mm -hmm. So as long as you tell to the people that climate change is a big problem that costs a lot of money and we have to solve it for the future generations, nothing will happen. Who cares about the ice melting in 50 years if you need to take your car today to go for shopping or if you want to produce something to give work to your employees and pay the salary? Mm -hmm. So you need to change this behavior into a behavior that is profitable today for the generation of today in terms of new products for the industry, in terms of new industrial processes, in terms of new clean technologies that will replace the old polluting devices that we have. And this is something extremely practical. But it involves the governments. Mm -hmm. We need a legal frame that will push the replacement of all polluting devices by new clean technologies. We have laws and legislations and regulations for hygiene, for health, for education, for taxes, for justice, for police, for everything that allows us to live together. 
There is no regulation that prevents people from sending as much CO2 as they want in the atmosphere. There is no legislation and regulation that prevents people to use technologies that are 100 years old. The insulation of our houses, our light bulbs, thermal engines, mm -hmm. you know, it's our heating systems, they are 100 years old. They have more losses than performance. This is what we need to change. And uh, last question, uh, Bertrand, uh, as you are a visionary person, I imagine that uh, you have already some plans after the flight of Solar Impulse. Could you tell us more about these plans? I hate to tempt fate. <laughs> <laughs> Let's finish Solar Impulse first. Okay. So I you know, it's a difficult project. It's very difficult, it's very ambitious, it's a big team, there's a lot of money uh, to make it happen uh, with partners. It's, it's really something that has so many pieces in the puzzle that we have to focus to have all these pieces at the right place to give the right image, the right picture at the end. If one piece is missing, mm -hmm. we won't succeed. So you are really focusing on solar impulse. Yeah, absolutely. The only, fa uh, the only thing in your head. Well, we're, we're thinking of different things like making a solar impulse for high altitude telecommunication systems with no pilot on board, mm -hmm. uh, 20 kilometers high, Solar impulse UAV with remote control or GPS guidance, making the Wi-Fi or the GSM telecommunication to replace satellite. Th that's a good application. Uh, but at the same time, it's an industry process. And I'm a pioneer. I'm not an industrial. OK. Uh, so the last thing, my dream is to see you in Abu Dhabi and to see your tears when you arrive. <laughs> to Abu Dhabi, when you land, when you go out, and you say, I made it. And I wish you this from my heart. Thank you very much. You'll have the tears if I make it, I tell you. <laughs>